window managers in Linux Mint. Hey everyone, what's happening? Today, we're going to do something really interesting with Linux Mint, and that is installing a basic window manager inside of Linux Mint. Now, the window manager that I have chosen is i3, which is a tiling window manager. Some may call it a dynamic window manager, but I'll refer to it as a tiling. I think most people refer to it as a tiling window manager because it tiles by default even though they do have a floating window manager. Now I'll explain what tiling and tiling window managers uh, when we jump to the desktop and jump into You also have floating window managers such as Openbox to choose from as well. And we'll be going over floating window managers also and how to install them inside of Linux Mint in a different video. But right now, we're going to focus on i3 today. But when I install a floating window manager, it probably will be open box. So let's go ahead, let's jump over to the desktop and let's get i3 set up and installed. Now here we are on the desktop of my Linux Mint machine, and we're gonna go ahead and install i3. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go ahead and open up a terminal. And I'm gonna run a sudo apt install. And for to install i3, I'm just gonna do i3, if I can type that. And then also, we gotta install an app launcher that is in, compatible with i3. And there are two major app launchers that are compatible that normally are used with i3, and that's Rofi and Dmenu. Now, I'm not a bit the biggest fan of Dmenu. I prefer Rofi, so I'm going to go ahead and install Rofi. And then we're going to go ahead and enter in my password. Now it's going to bring up. Now we're going to go ahead and hit yes, and now it's going to install. Now this is just going to take a few seconds. Now while that's installing, we also are going to want a config file. Now I have a config file here. If you do not want to use my config file that's on my GitHub, I should probably say this config file I'm going to use is on my GitHub, and I'll link that in the description. But if you don't grab this, you will receive a uh, dialog box that will prompt you to create a config file. It will generate a config file that's default settings. So even if you don't have this config file, it will generate one for you. But I like my config file, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut this. And where this goes is in your home folder. Well, actually, we'll do this in Nautilus. And we're going to go ahead and hit Control H and we're going to go down to the dot config file folder here. And then we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it i3. And then we're going to paste, the, uh, then we're going to cut and paste this particular config file in here. Now we'll go over this config file in a little bit, but this is what d defines so the behaviors and the key bindings for this tiling ma window manager because tiling window managers are typically keyboard driven with key bindings. So we're going to go ahead and close out of that. Now this should be installed and it is installed. Now all it takes is closing out of this and logging out of Cinnamon and logging into your window manager. Now to do this you would log out, then you would click on, this is on Linux Mint, you would click that circular icon, and then you would select i3 from the menu. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and log back into i3 in a minute. Now here we are on i3, and as you can see we have no wallpaper, etc. Now there was one thing I did forget, so 
we're going to, we have this error command status not found we're going to go ahead and open up my terminal and that is a separate package that I forgot to install so it's a sudo apt install i3 status you can you can also install this when you install i3 you just got to remember to put it in the command We'll go ahead and install that, and then I'm going to uh, restart i3, so I will be right back. Desktop. Now, I have turned on screen keys, so you can see what I'm hitting on my keyboard as we're uh, navigating this window manager, because it's keyboard driven, mostly. Uh, for first, we're going to go ahead and take a look at my config file. So we're going to go ahead and open a terminal and that will be a super T right here. We're going to do an atom slash let's see let's do a so, uh, config uh, dot config slash i3 Slash config, and that should bring up my text manager, my text editor. Sorry, now this is Adam. And we'll go over for Adam at one point. Now I'm just going to go ahead and. No, that's not it. I forgot that key binding, but. We'll go ahead and move it to a different workspace so I can see it. And. Now. Here, here's all the comments here. It's kind of a help. Now, this is set mod key mod for. Now, that's my mod key, which is the super, which basically is telling the window manager that I'm attempting a key binding. So, I have set that to the super key. So, basically, all my key bindings are going to start with that super key, uh, which is your Windows key, often called in Windows machines, etc. Now, of course, here's where we've set our key, key bindings. And to, to uh, set a key binding in, a, in I3, you would do a bind sim right here. You see this bind sim? That's how it starts. Then it's the dollar sign mod, what which means your super key. Or you can also set it to the alt key, but I like the super key exec, which means so mod plus whatever it is, so mod plus T, and then exec, which means execute a command, and then terminator. So that would be my terminator. So when I press mod T, it brings up my terminator, terminal emulator. Now, the way I've got this set up, I do a mod F4 and it closes out of the window. Now, as you can see, when I open up a window, Let's just open up Firefox, which would be a mod F. As you see, it's tiling side by side. Now, I can do a mod, mod shift down, and it can tile up and down. And then I can go ahead and open up another one, and it tiles like that. Then I can just move that mod shift over like that. This is really, really neat. Now let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and let's close out of that and close out of that. Now, as you can see, there are a myriad of key bindings here. Now, uh, like like the resize icon, like the resize command and stuff. Well, let's go ahead and move our attention here. Now, as you can see, this is commented out with a pound sign, which means this is not a command. I have them labeled here so I know what it is. Now, as you can see, it says exec underscore I'll always nitrogen dash dash restore slash home slash Allen slash pictures. 
Now that's a wallpaper setting. Now, the reason why it's not restoring anything is because I have not yet set a wallpaper and I haven't installed nitrogen. We'll install nitrogen in a second and set the wallpaper. But as you can see, when I hit bind sim, this, this is my Firefox, which is mod F or super F. Super M is Thunderbird for my email. And then mod, uh, mod plus one is exec, that's what I've got set for my water fox. If I have that installed, I don't think I have water fox installed yet on this machine. I haven't gotten to that. Of course, mod O is LibreOffice and mod P is Mousepad, which is not installed on this system. Um, I'm going to probably change that to Adam. I wrote this on an Arch machine, so bear with me on this. And then these are how you switch them. So let's go ahead and let's uh, move this to uh, Workspace 1. As you can see, I got two workspaces. When I do this, I just go mod shift, which is super shift 1. Of course, it shows an exclamation point because I'm hitting the uh, super. Then to switch my workspace, I press mod 1. Now, if I want to move, let's just say I want this move, move to uh, workspace 3, I do a mod shift or super shift 3. And then I'll put a number 3 down here. Now, I can switch them with my mouse as well. So mod shift 2. There we are. Then I can do a mod F. Now I've got a web browser here. Then I go mod 2. I have my terminal here. Mod 3. I have that right there. Simple enough. Now let's go ahead. Let's go to my terminal again. Now we're going to go ahead and install nitrogen. So that'd be a sudo apt install nitrogen. And here you know oh, we've installed nitrogen. Now I cut out the part where I type my password, so you don't need to know my password. But as you can see, I have it installed. Alright, now that I got that installed, now we're gonna go ahead and launch nitrogen. And here's nitrogen. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit pref I'm gonna go ahead and hit preferences here. And I've, of course you have this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add the pictures directory to it. And now of course I've got all my thumbnail pictures and stuff there, but we're gonna go ahead and apply that. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up another workspace and there's my wallpaper. Now this should start every time so I'm going to go ahead and log out and then log back in and I'll be right back. As you can see here's my wallpaper it starts up automatically and that would be on that would be because of that setting I showed you in my config file. Let's go ahead let's open that actually. Let's go let's go back here and go to home control H to and then we're going to go to dot config and then I3 and config. And that is thanks to the setting down here at the bottom. Now, this is just a basic overview of how to get everything just started. I'm not going to show you how to style things and all that stuff in this video. That'll be a different video. But as you can see, 
This is how basically a tiling window manager works. Basically just side by side, super shift like that, and then I can press super up, down to change my focus. Or the way I also have it set is the mouse, but I typically don't like that. I don't know why it's doing that. I'll have to go and play around with the config file. But basically this is a basic overview of how a tiling window manager works. Um, oh wait a minute, before we end this video, I'm going to show you Rofi, which is Alt-Enter. Now, this is a typical app launcher here, and we're just going to go ahead and hit. Now, if I want to do something, I can just go ahead and press Enter right here. If it's right there in the list, it shows it in the order that you've executed. So, let's just say it keeps, it keeps a record. So, last one I did was Adam. So, that would be... The last one now, let's just say I want to install Lib launch LibreOffice from that here. I was just start typing it, LibreOffice, and then there it is. And it starts LibreOffice. Very, very simple. D menu also works about the same, but I prefer Rofi to D menu any day of the week. So Rofi, but then let's just say I should have nitrogen in here. Hey, yep, there it is. There's nitrogen. So that's basically I3. Now that was getting the I3 Windows Manager installed and running on Linux Mint. Now this was very, very basic. Uh, there's also a kind of other things you can do on I3. And we'll be going over some of that in later videos, but it will take Quite a few videos to go over that, so this will definitely not be the first, the last time, rather, that you'll see this setup. Now, there are a couple things you need to keep in mind. I3 is not directly supported by Linux Mint, so you may run into a couple issues. As far as you saw, I ran into one where it didn't install that dependency, which was weird. I've never had that happen before, but uh, it happened. And I fixed that was easily resolved. If you run into that situation, just go ahead and just install a dependency. Um, if you run into some other issues, you should also consult like the i3 wiki and the Arch wiki, etc. for i3 and ask in forums because there's some really good information on those sites. And with that, I'm going to see you in the next video. If you like my content and wish to support my work, you can do so on Patreon. The link is in the description. Also, if you wish to see more, check out the videos on your screen.